I'm Channing McCorston, the container guy. We understand there's a huge tiny home and container home following out there. We'll do our best to constantly revert back and provide insight to you guys as we perform our industrial modifications. 90% of the container home information out there is garbage. You want a home that lasts and that is safe to live in. In this video, we'll interview our spray foam contractor and get the right information right from the horse's mouth. It's super important, I need to stress this, that you get ready for your contractor to arrive. Uh, you know what you need to tell them and walk through the container with the sprayer, not just their boss. Show them exactly uh, any potential areas of concerns, if there's something to do or do not want insulated because yeah, the more prep work the contractor can do, tape off any studs, make sure that you know something that doesn't need to be foamed doesn't get foamed. More prepared you are ahead of time, better job they do, less work later and just nicer, clean finish with the proper vapor barrier. Okay, so the contractor just finished up the spray foam job. Uh, we're blessed with the boss man at Comfort Insulation. We got Lewis here. Uh, he came in just to check on the progress and see how his uh, guys did. And I figured this is a great opportunity to snag him and pick his brain and get him to tell us what are the benefits of using spray foam in a shipping container. Hello, I'm from Comfort Insulation and I came just to check the spray foam that the guys did today in this container. This is a 20 standard container. We use two pound foam on the exterior cavity. Two inches is the minimum required for a vapor barrier. As you can see, the framing is pretty well done. So we can have a continuous vapor barrier in every corner and we don't have any gaps whatsoever. This is pretty much what we're looking for, making sure that the container is sealed 100% and you don't have any kind of condensation or anything like that happening in winter. Yeah, that's good. So, <coughs> what are the advantages of using spray foam versus a fiberglass bat insulation? Huge advantages with the spray foam. Huge. A spray foam, as you can see, is a dense, we call it medium dense product. Uh, it attached to the steel cavity, yeah. so there is nothing in between, right? So there is no condensation. It becomes like a one structure. Yeah. And so that condensation in the fiberglass insulation that could lead to health problems? Tons of problems, tons of problems. Metal conducts tons of thermal. So when you actually try to put regular fiberglass, what you're doing is creating a gap inside and obviously future issues. That's yeah. what we're doing. So in this way, as you can see, there is nothing in between. So all you need to do is just put a drywall on top, or in this case, if it's industrial, you can put OSB or plywood, it depends yeah. on what you're gonna use it for. Yeah. But this is all you need. I would not recommend doing a fiberglass insulation in an exterior wall in a container, uh, particularly if you're gonna put heat or you know keep it warm during cold temperatures. Yeah. And you know, at the end of the day, you wanna buy things and, and, and build things that are gonna last long, and this is the best way to do it. This is an industrial product, so two inches, uh, as you suggest, is, is kind of all we need for this style of mod. But if you were to build a container home for, I guess, viewers that are, that are looking to do that, how, how much insulation would you suggest? I will say for a home, I will do three inches minimum. With three inches, you can achieve R20, which is pretty standard for regular homes that we have already at the city. If you're building a container home, three inches is often best. You get your R20 there. You'll have to do a bit thicker of a wall stud, so we're using a two and a half inch steel stud here. You have to go to the three and five eighths. And a lot of people, they wonder, like, how long does it take for the spray foam to cure and before you can occupy the space? Well, the spray foam um, reacts pretty quick, you know, in seconds, actually. So, but we always tell uh, contractors and uh, just to wait a few hours, at least four hours, so that the fumes uh, can actually leave the, in this case, the container or the building, if it's a house, it's just perfumes, you know? It's nothing to do with the product. The product is pretty much ready at the same time that you're applying, a few seconds after, yeah. Luis and I, we've been working together for, for 10 years now. Uh, we became great friends, but you know, it, it's not our friendship that gets me uh, constantly bringing them back. It's, 
it's the the product, so spray foam alone, but also the way that his uh, staff apply it. So, you know, he has very strict quality control. He's here himself checking on his contractors, making sure they're doing a good job, making sure his customers are happy, and, and that's definitely what keeps us coming back to comfort insulation. Appreciate it. Thanks to the container guy, Chani, and all the staff. Uh, we've been working together for a really long time. Uh, different kind of containers, different modifications, uh, use and many different kind of different things. So yeah, uh, don't forget to come to the container guy for your next container. Great guys and great stuff. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Yeah, for sure. So there you've heard it from the insulation expert. In temperate climates, improper insulation will eventually lead to health concerns. To mitigate this risk, I'll talk more on framing and insulation types. Containers are a beautifully sealed steel structure, and the moment you add wood back into the building envelope, you're going backwards. Don't use two by four wood studs flat on their face. They'll bend and bow like hockey sticks. Don't use two by four wood studs framed regularly. Where they touch the inside corrugations, they'll condensate and wick moisture, which is a ripe environment for mold and mildew growth. Framing in a container is non-structural. Do not frame headers above your windows and doors similar to traditional framing methods. The purpose of framing the interior of a container is to conceal wiring and provide studs to secure your wall covering. Use steel studs. They're always straight, they're super light, and you can get away with 2.5 inch steel studs, which gains a valuable two inches of interior width. Furthermore, the R value of softwood is 1.25 per inch, whereas two pound closed cell foam is R6 to seven per inch. Next is insulation. In temperate climates, fiberglass bat insulation in a shipping container is just bad, wrong, and evil, especially if you install a vapor barrier. An insulated wall cavity that cannot breathe will mold in any climate. For liability reasons here at The Container Guy, we refuse to use anything other than spray foam insulation. It's a company policy. It provides a perfect, flawless vapor barrier and adds so much structure to the container. If you are going to splurge anywhere on your container home, it should be on spray foam insulation. To recap, the building envelope we suggest is a steel stud framed container with two pound closed cell spray foam insulation applied by a professional contractor. A few quick tips, don't buy the do-it-yourself foam kits and think you're gonna save a few hundred dollars. I've tried it, it's brutal. When framing, make sure you leave room in the corners for the sprayer to fit their gun slash nozzle. You must strap the steel stud with stiffener bars so the spray foam doesn't twist or bow the studs as it expands. With the three and five eight studs, we insert them through the pre-punched loops. With 2.5 inch studs, we surface mount the strapping then remove it later. That wraps up the do's and don'ts of insulating a shipping container. If you have any questions that I didn't cover, leave them in the comments below. Also, feel free to leave new video suggestions down there. And as always, if you like this video, please give it a like, smash that subscribe button, and ring the bell for notifications, or check us out at tcg.ca. Hope you learned something.